Do your knees really give you trouble, which impacts your ability to hike and enjoy the outdoors? If so, I'd love to share these three exercises with you. So knee pain is one of the most common issues that hikers deal with. If you struggle with chronic knee pain, you know what I'm talking about. In the morning, when you get up out of bed, try to walk to the bathroom. You are, your knee already feels stiff and achy, maybe like you're the tin can man, right? In the afternoon, you've been sitting for too long. You try to get up and walk around. You already feel pain, right? Well, the worst of it all is when you're out so outdoors trying to enjoy yourself hiking and you feel like no matter what you're going to do, that knee is going to be the number one cause of your trouble for the afternoon. That stinks, but there's things we could do about it. Over the years, I've worked with dozens of clients who have had chronic knee pain. Most of the times, people come to see me after they've gone through the traditional approach to begin with. People with knee pain may have had joint replacement or reconstructive surgery or cortisone injections. People wear knee braces. They do self-massage and foam roller on their own. Maybe they've done acupuncture and some of these other approaches as well. Unfortunately, oftentimes people are still left with debilitating knee pain. But over the years, through working with all these people with knee pain, I've realized that there are some simple exercises that you could do on your own to either prevent knee pain from the first place or to help you overcome it once you have it. So when you think about problems in your knee joint, I want you to think about the other joints that are connected to your knee. So obviously below your knee joint, you have your ankle and you have your, all the joints within your foot. Above your knee, you have your hip. So you think about how those three joints are connected, right? Your hip, your knee, and your ankle. All those joints need to have a lot of mobility and to move freely as your skeletal system was designed to. So if one joint lacks mobility, there's going to be a consequence up throughout the rest of your skeletal system. So imagine if you lack mobility within your ankle joint, how that could carry up to cause tension within your knee. Or if your hip is stiff and doesn't move freely as it was designed to, imagine how that stuck femur may give you an issue within your knee joint. So the better mobility you have within these three joints, your knee, your hip, and your ankle, the better your skeletal system is gonna be able to move freely as it was designed to, ultimately reassuring your brain that you can move freely, and which is gonna prevent you from having the sensation of pain. Okay, welcome to my studio. So today we're gonna to be working on those three specific mobility exercises to help relieve your chronic knee pain. So the first thing I'd like you to do is kind of just check in with your knee and see how it currently feels before we do the exercises. So you could do that thinking about what your pain is on a scale of one to 10. You could walk around, you could lunge, you could do a few squats and just check in to see, okay, what's your current range of motion? Do you feel that your knee is restricted? Does it feel really tight? Is your pain really high? I just want you to take a mental note of that before we start with the exercises. Okay, so now remember we're gonna be working those three joints on the side of where you have your knee pain, right? So say you have right knee pain. We're gonna be working that ankle, the knee, and the hip. So to start with, you could do this sitting down if you need to, but I'm gonna do it standing up. And if you have poor balance, you could do it holding something, be at a door frame, et cetera, right? So here I am, I want you to pay attention to my right foot. I'm doing a circular motion, just mobilizing that ankle. What I'm not doing is moving my whole leg, right? I'm trying to isolate my foot from the rest of my leg, and I'm just mobilizing it in a clockwise and a counterclockwise direction. So now I'm going to do this from a close-up so you get a better angle. Okay, so from a close-up, you're able to see my foot and a little bit better view. So you can notice I'm really taking my foot in a full range of motion, even involving my toes, as I go in a clockwise direction. Right? Notice how I'm really isolating my foot and ankle and not moving my entire leg, right? It's important that you're able to isolate that joint, develop that motor control, and really trying to open up and mobilize your ankle as much as possible. So I want you to try to do five to 10 repetitions in each direction. 
Okay, so now we're going to be working on your knee joint. So what I want you to do is place your right leg or the, the leg that you're experiencing the knee discomfort in front of the other, right? So we're working on our right side. So I've got my right leg forward. And I'm going to keep my right foot down. But what I'm trying to do is take my knee through a full range of motion around my ankle and around my foot. And the only caveat is we don't want you to go into pain. So if your knee hurts you going into an extreme range of motion, I want you to limit that range of motion or reduce your speed. So notice I'm standing up nice and tall, right? I'm breathing. I'm taking that knee in a full range of motion around my foot in a clockwise and a counterclockwise direction. So you want to try to get as much range of motion as possible as long as you're able to keep that foot down and not go into knee pain. So I'm going to show you from a closer angle. Okay, so now from a close-up angle, I want you to pay attention to my knee. You see my foot staying steady on the ground. I'm going on the medial part of my foot. I'm going towards my toes, and I'm going external rotation away from my body. In, forward, and then out, right? So you want to do it in a nice circular direction without much kind of without many hiccups, so to speak. You want to be smooth. Try to have a good pace, a good range of motion without kind of being, um, having a lot of hiccups, so to speak, in the movement. And of course, we want to go in both directions. So you always also want to lock out the joint because we want to ex uh, get as much range of motion as possible. So start with your knee joint locked out. Go external, forward, keeping that heel down, and then internal rotation. So both my feet are planted on the ground firmly. If you need to separate a little bit wider, you can. Remember, you want to breathe and not go into pain, but you want to try to get a maximum range of motion. Okay, so now we're going to work on your hip joint. So for this, you need you need a prop of some sort. So I have a stick. You could use a walking stick, a cane, right? Or you could use a door frame or some other device that you're able to use for balance. So we're going to work on right hip. So I'm going to show it to you from this angle, right? So I'm using this for balance. And I'm going to take my right leg and I'm going to draw a big circle. So my left knee is slightly bent. And with my right foot, I'm drawing a large circle. I'm going forward, out to the side, and then behind my body. So you can think of positions. You can think of 12 noon, 3 o'clock, and 6. So I'm going, making a big circular motion. I'm trying to be as smooth as possible. And of course, you're going to go in both directions. So now I go reverse, out, forward. And you can imagine that you've got a laser on the bottom of your foot. And each time you're doing a pass, you're trying to go over the exact position you were before. So we want to be really nice and symmetrical. So that's from the side. I'll show you from the front. Looks like this. These are called open chain hip circles. So you're going to go one direction clockwise, then you go the opposite direction, which is counterclockwise. So you're going to get a bit of a burn, maybe in the standing leg that you're stabilizing on. You're going to feel all the muscles kind of tense up because that's the area where you're getting some stability from. And then the leg that you're moving, you're going to feel your glute work. And that's fine. That's okay. But the main goal is trying to mobilize that ball and socket joint, which is your hip. Okay, so now that we've worked these three different mobility exercises to help alleviate your knee pain, I want you to go back to the first thing we did, which was your assessment, right? So now that we've done that ankle circle and the knee circle and worked your hip with that open chain circle, 
what I want you to do is go back and think, okay, so now how does my knee feel? So before we did these three different exercises, maybe my pain was at a seven out of a 10. And now that I squat, and now that I'm lunging, or now that I'm walking around, I feel that, yeah, okay, my knee pain is about maybe a four out of a seven or four out of a 10 in comparison to where it was. Or I feel like I'm lighter on my feet, right? There's less restriction, there's less tightness in my knee. So that's what we want. That's the goal of these mobility exercises, right? So your knee doesn't act and move alone. It's connected to your ankle and it's connected to your hip. So the better all these chain of joints are moving, the better your knee is going to feel. Thanks a lot for watching my video. If you found it helpful, if you could support my channel by liking the video below and subscribing to my channel, that would be really great and supportive. In addition to that, if you are someone who really deals with a lot of chronic aches and pains and that holds you back from enjoying your time in the outdoors hiking, I have a great resource that should be helpful to you. It contains some of my favorite exercises that are definitely gonna help keep you pain-free and mobile when you go out hiking. You can download that at the bottom of this page. I'll drop a link in addition to um, my homepage where you can access that. So thanks a lot for all your support and talk to you soon.